Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Video Bros Network. I am Bobby Munson, and I'm coming at you with another edition of The Boss's Bravado. Yes, this is my show where I go ahead and do some reviews of all things professional wrestling, especially when it comes to a little bit more of the modern topics. Today on my show, we're going to get down to a review of a documentary film that just dropped on Netflix, this one called You Cannot Kill David Arquette. So right away, before we get started, I'm going to ask you to click the subscribe button down below, hit the notification bell so you know whenever we release new material on the Video Bros Network, including my regular podcast that I do with good old Papa Smokes, the man with the angelic voice, Ring Respect Radio. Go and check out all the latest episodes of Ring Respect Radio and find out a little bit more about the history of professional wrestling as well as some reviews and topics from modern wrestling, especially when it comes to the independent and smaller wrestling leagues. Now, we're going to get on to this You Cannot Kill David Arquette. This is a film by Price James and David Dard, and it follows David Arquette and his return to professional wrestling. Uh, many of you out there will already know that David Arquette uh, had a run in WCW. He was brought in as a celebrity talent to boost ratings. This was a Vince Russo style idea, that type of booking that went on during that kind of so sought after attitude area that everybody always talks so highly about. But yes, has, you know, the ability to crap all over a lot of the things that ever went down in it, including the time when David Arquette won the WCW Championship. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about that as this goes, but the film's directive is to go ahead and try to get us to see this journey that David Arquette went on from being pulled into the WCW to his life just afterwards and his return to professional wrestling and what he did to want to kind of redeem himself. Is this enough of a redemption for David Arquette? Did he do enough to earn the respect of wrestling fans who once pushed him aside and said this guy is a joke to professional wrestling and that he basically bastardized the WCW championship when he won it, despite the fact that David Arquette was not the booker and did not make himself the WCW champion. Many still point fingers at him as being the one to have ruined that championship belt. Now let's get down to this film. So, okay, the film starts off talking about those WCW days and David being brought in, he not being properly trained, the anger, the animosity towards him, all this kind of stuff, and how it also kind of soured his time in Hollywood as well, too. It shows him driving to some acting gigs. He's been spending 10 years going after gigs when this guy was once a hot sought after celebrity, you know, top actor of his time, uh, starring alongside many different people, doing a lot of different films. Uh, you know, come to mind the Scream franchise, for example, which he will apparently be returning in Scream 5 coming up soon as well, too. Uh, so, you know, interesting to find out that here's this guy that, you know, started off as an actor and his choice to go into the professional wrestling world almost soured his ability to get booked as a serious actor. Therefore, afterwards, this was quite an interesting thing that I found out as well, too, is that David Arquette's dad, they mention in here, did the voice of Jimmy Superfly Snuka in Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. So, I mean, David Arquette did start off as a fan of professional wrestling. Mentions that he watched this with his father growing up, that his father then, you know, again, a voice actor that was involved with the cartoon side of professional wrestling. So there is the fan in David Arquette to begin with. So this isn't somebody from Hollywood just looking for more spotlight. This isn't somebody who wants to make it to Hollywood that uses professional wrestling as their platform. This is a guy who started as a fan. So let's get that point very clear right off the hop. This guy was a fan first. I'm not saying that I agree with him and the WCW championship to run, but then again, I don't agree with a lot of things that happened during that time of professional wrestling as well too. Uh, they then go to showing a autograph signing that David goes to. He goes and gets a professional photo shoot done. I think he believes that there's going to be a lot of people that are going to come up and want to get his autograph and stuff. And he ends up being the Virgil of this particular autograph session. I mean, nobody is coming to his booth. He's sitting there all by himself learning firsthand that, you know, they don't care who you were or what you are. You were nothing to the professional wrestling business at that point in time. And therefore, professional wrestling fans had zero interest 
and going and meeting David Arquette on the professional wrestling side. From there, David Arquette, you know, I mean, he wants to get back into it. He wants to do this. And some guys invite him to a backyard wrestling show. So right off the hop, here's a big X for this whole thing. I do not want to see exposure of backyard wrestling to a large mass of people. In fact, backyard wrestling should not even be allowed to take place. It is not properly done. A lot of the time, the safety is not considered. There is a lot of things done very incorrectly when it comes to many, many backyard wrestling federations. Some guys are trained properly. Some are not. Many are not, in fact, actually. And watching this, you know, garbage going on and these things happening with these guys, I mean, their ring's not even holding together properly and stuff like that. They're not prepared to be doing this kind of thing. And they sit there and interview them like these guys are our professional wrestling. These are the guys that, you know, oh, David gets in with them and he has to learn his lesson with guys like this. No, he has to learn his lesson with actual professional wrestlers, not backyard wrestlers. And I really did not enjoy watching these guys get that much spotlight on this particular film. Uh, from there, though, this is what invokes David to go and seek out actual professional wrestling training. So he starts to take a little bit of his training he then uh, wants to seek out going to Diamond Dallas Page, DDP, the guy who he won the WCW championship from, to go and, you know, train with him, do the DDP yoga. Uh, it shows DDP talking about when David was in WCW. He actually, David Arquette actually said he did not want to win the WCW championship. He did not want to destroy the legacy of the title. He was a fan. But, I mean, he was a young guy who was brought into a world that he really enjoyed. So, again, I ask the question of many of you, just like the movie did, if you were in the same position. Are you telling me you would not allow a heavyweight championship to be put on you because of the legacy it holds behind you? Not likely, especially when they're throwing that kind of money at you. It would be damn hard to say no at that point, especially to a booker who has brought you in and said, hey, this is what we're going to do. Because anybody who's worked in the professional wrestling business knows that that booker is the one making the call. It's their decision. It's their show. You're out there to perform on behalf of them. If you don't like what they're doing or anything like that, granted, you can choose not to work for them. You can walk away from it. And Arquette might have been able to make that choice. But I mean, he was a young guy at the top of Hollywood being brought into this world that he loved, getting a lot of attention. Again, he was young. He was told what to do. He went out and did it. And it is what it is. So DDP takes him in, starts giving him the DDPY, the DDP yoga treatment. And then from there, David Arquette decides to further things. And he's going to go take some training in Mexico, some lucha training. So this is quite interesting, getting to learn from some actual luchadors down in Mexico. Uh, from there, he actually goes and does some uh, lucha street fighting or street matches, so to say. So in traffic, they actually go and put on this luchador performance and then afterwards go up to the vehicles and people donate uh, whatever they can give, bits of money to the luchador wrestlers. And they had Arquette doing this. So again, this is paying more respect to wrestling business. These guys are professional luchador wrestlers out in Mexico. They're showing him the ropes. They're tra training him properly. The street thing, okay, it is what it is. It's how they do things down there. That is the way of their culture. And it was quite unique to see. Very interesting. Uh, they then take uh, Mr. Arquette down to a tattoo parlor where he gets a luchador mask uh, gone and tattooed on his body. Then he has a match. He actually has a multi-man tag team luchador match. He is in a lucha mask. And after the match, uh, his team were successful. They were the winners. They're backstage, and the luchadors actually unmask for Arquette. They show their faces to Arquette, which anybody who knows anything about lucha wrestling should know that you do not get to see the man underneath the mask. It's a very much a respect thing for a luchador to keep his mask on. And so if they are revealing their face to you, you know that you've been uh, brought into their world. And so he was uh, one of them actually gifting his mask to David Arquette. And David Arquette, very grateful for that. Uh, from there, David Arquette went on to the Wendy Williams show where he made an announcement that he was making a full-on return to professional wrestling. Uh, from there, I did not know this, but David Arquette actually went and purchased a wrestling ring in his backyard to continue his training. 
right from home. So he was able to go in there. 48 years old and he's gone and done this. He gave up smoking. He gave up drinking. Uh, so this guy is going stone cold sober and going out there and taking bumps. And man, that shit hurts. So guaranteed his body is getting bruised, is getting beaten. And the fact that he's not going after anything to go and help with that pain, that he's using this as his thrill, this is quite interesting to see. Uh, I should mention that earlier in the film, they also did go through a segment where David Arquette was getting a scan of his brain done and stuff like that. He deals with a lot of emotional problems and stuff like that uh, from you know, the way, you know, life was for him growing up and stuff like that, being in, you know, a family of actors and actresses and everything. It's, you know, I mean, it obviously has taken its toll on him over the years and he deals with a lot of, uh, with a lot of mental health problems. It was interesting to see that and to understand like this, this passion of his to want to be accepted back into the professional wrestling. And so here he is now gone through all this training, through all the heartache, all the parts you need to do to get to the dance. And now the dance begins. He gets called out on social media by RJ City. And this started a bitter feud between the two of them. They even started a little scrap outside of an award show that Arquette was uh, present at, which really got a lot of buzz. Uh, David then was given a matchup with RJ City. This went on to Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, if you do not know, is a show. You can actually check it out right on YouTube. It's under, I believe it's under the United Wrestling Network's banner. So go and check them out on YouTube. A lot of material over there. And yes, David Arquette versus RJ City. Now, RJ City picked up the win, but Arquette got a lot of stuff in there. And he really made a believer at that point out of his own daughter she started to really get into it she got excited she wanted to show her mom what dad uh, david was doing and everything like that i mean it was it was something else i mean this was quite interesting to see him get that opportunity question is is it all going to pay off right like i mean the guy's lost 50 pounds he quit smoking he quit drinking he's doing this then what's next for the guy, especially at his age? Where do you go from there? And unfortunately, this is where we're going to take a little bit of a turn to something I'm really against. And you know what? This goes to a match he had in a death match. This is death match bullshit 101. I could not stand to watch this when I saw the clip of it when it originally happened. And the fact that it's highlighted in this movie. I know it had to be for the movie purpose. I understand it had to be. But man, this shit needs to stop. Death match stuff needs to stop, especially using light tubes now i've been there i've been there firsthand seeing the guys getting hit with chairs going through tables doing these you know grudge matches hardcore matches and stuff like that where it's stuff that okay might be around a ring in an actual ring when it comes to an independent show or something like that but you know what's not in an independent show light tubes unless they're in the back room somewhere because some maintenance guy forgot to put the fucking light tubes in that day that is the only reason light tubes would be present and let me tell you i actually do sales for electrical products that's my daily full-time job okay so i deal with fluorescent tubing i know it might not be a lot of mercury in those things but there is a slight little a bit of mercury inside those lamps the phosphors in there as well too when you start breaking those lamps and cutting it and that glass and that really powdered stuff getting inside of you those phosphors that little bits of glass that you're not even able to see because that shit breaks into a million pieces that stuff can get into your bloodstream and cause all sorts of health issues. It makes me sick to my stomach when I see anybody in professional wrestling do it, especially when I see people that I know doing it. And I'm not talking, I know David Arquette, but I have seen some people that I have worked with or been in, you know, a room with and stuff like that do these things. And it really hurts me. It makes me sick to my stomach because I don't want to see people getting on that level when they don't need to the people who enjoy these types of things are only going to remember it for the first couple of weeks and then they're going to forget about it when the next match like that comes along or the next exciting new wrestling thing they see comes along and then they've forgotten all about your light tube fucking garbage and gone on to the next thing so it is completely unnecessary you're putting extra harm on your body and long-term health problems that this can bring along you're already putting enough risk on the line do not put more risk with this and of course this is even worse because our cat got stabbed in the neck a man just about died in the fucking ring for the entertainment of people who enjoy 
death match bullshit. It has to stop. I'm sorry, I know this is a channel where I have a show called Ring Respect Radio and I respect the ring, but I don't respect light tubes and fucking death matches when we're just about killing a guy. All right, enough of the madness. Let's move on to the rest of the movie because that part enraged me a bit, but I understand why the guys had to include this because it was a large segment of this wrestling run for David Arquette. So you would almost be completely missing a good chunk of your documentary if you did not have it in there. So again, I'm not shitting on the movie. I'm shitting on deathmatch garbage bullshit is what I'm doing. And if you don't like me because I don't like deathmatch garbage bullshit, well, as somebody famous once said, thank you, fuck you, bye. Now, from there, we go on past that, and it comes to Legends of Wrestling, something David Arquette wanted so badly to be a part of. So he had the opportunity to go and face Ken Anderson at the Legends of Wrestling to really... You know, give it this one last, you know, kick of the can. One thing he really wanted to be able to do in this time while he's professional uh, professional wrestler. And he went out there. He had a match with Ken Anderson, somebody who could really work with him. Somebody who's been in WWE and all the bigger name companies that have come along since. Ken Anderson is a great worker inside that ring. And so David Arquette got the opportunity to mix it up with Ken Anderson, show him what he could do in wrestling and that was excellent to see way to bring it back way to make it more enjoyable uh at the end booker t raising the hand of david arquette as well too i mean now you're starting to realize the respect is being earned back david arquette starting to get the respect from people inside the business and it's great to see so has he done it is it his swan song yes he has done it he's redeemed himself for all of it because in a sense he did not make that choice. And considering a lot of things that professional wrestlers do today because the booker tells them to or because the, they seen somebody do it on fucking YouTube. I mean, is what David Arquette done as much a sin today now as it was back then considering all the things that professional wrestling has become in the modern era? That begs the question and I want to know what you think in the comments section down below. Now this film ends up with the last little piece, which is where Jungle Boy took on David Arquette. This is shortly after Luke Perry, who is the father of Jungle Boy, had passed away. Obviously, David Arquette knew Luke Perry on a personal level. And so, therefore, this was kind of to pay honor and tribute to Luke Perry at the same time. David Arquette able to, you know, work with somebody he knows and, you know, raise his hand at the end and really, you know, kind of have that feel-good moment, and that's like, I guess this is what the documentary needed to wind up with was that feel-good moment, and it got that. So that was the documentary in a nutshell. You can find this on Netflix. It's You Cannot Kill David Arquette, and please do not, ex you know, take my rants in this about deathmatch stuff or any of the backyard stuff as something to make you avoid watching the film altogether. The film altogether has been pieced together well, very well done by Price James and David Darg who have done a nice job putting this thing together. It is no wonder that Netflix has chosen to pick this up and put it out. David Arquette. In so many ways, this film kind of feels like the wrestler, almost in a sense, only in a different way. This guy is redeeming himself and not, you know, at the end of a wrestling career. He is just starting a wrestling career to redeem himself for what he did in his youth. And this is what got him off of drinking and smoking and all these kinds of things. So it's almost like the wrestler in reverse in so many ways. And that, in a sense, has got, you know, to hold some merit and very respectful. It was a very good documentary. I would say I enjoyed it. It was a, a decent hour and a half watch. I think that uh, anyone who works in the wrestling industry or is a fan of wrestling in general should at least take the 90 minutes to sit down and watch this, soak it in, whether or not you still, at the end of it, hate David Arquette for having won the WCW championship or not. You got to understand, this is a guy who went back to redeem himself for the business that he truly loved. And for that, hey, he gets a thumbs up and so do the filmmakers from good old Bobby Munson. So that's it. That's You Cannot Kill David Arquette. Uh, what do you think of it? Have you seen the movie? If you have, let me know in the comments below what were your thoughts. 
And as always, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below and turn on the notifications bell as well. You can also go check out my podcast here, Bosses Bravado, as well as Ring Respect Radio. Past shows are available through our YouTube channel here, also through the YouTube channel of our friends at Backbreaker Media, and also through Backbreaker Media on Podbean as well. So go check out Backbreaker Media, our good friends over in Alberta there who have done so much for us here at the Video Bros Network, and we have nothing but love and respect for them. That's going to be it for me today. Thank you for tuning in, and until next time, take care.